Let's talk about a total knee replacement and specifically the technical things that go into that, kind of what leads up to the hospitalization, what happens in the hospital, and then what the surgery is like. In another video, we'll talk about the post-operative management of things. So when we get to a place where we've decided and you've decided that a total knee replacement is the best option for dealing with the arthritis pain that you're having in your knee, uh, then we schedule you for a total knee replacement. As we've talked about in another video, there's a pretty extensive process that goes into planning your surgery and specifically trying to be sure that we have you medically optimized. That phrase, medically optimized, means that uh, all of your medical conditions are under uh, optimal control. We've identified or eliminated anything that we can. We've gotten you uh, mentally in shape for surgery and, and really prepared. So once all those things are done, then we move on to the surgery itself. So whether you're having your surgery at the surgery center as a pure outpatient procedure, or if you're having it at the hospital, either as an outpatient or as an overnight stay inpatient type procedure, uh, everything that I'm going to say is really about the same for a knee replacement. Patients arrive at the facility and then go to what's called the preoperative area. In the preoperative area, you'll see a nurse who will interview you, ask you those same questions that everybody asks you multiple times about your allergies, any medicines you're on, and uh, which side we're operating on. You'll get that. You'll get asked that many, many times by everybody who comes in contact with you, just to be sure we're as safe as we can and that we're operating on the correct uh, body part. And then the next thing that will happen if you're going to have a knee replacement is in most circumstances you will get a nerve block called an adductor canal block. So a nerve block is a procedure that the anesthesiologist does where under ultrasound guidance they target some of the specific nerves that ultimately go to the front and to the inside of the knee. There's a structure in the body on the medial thigh, on the inner thigh, called the adductor canal. They target that and they put uh, a lot of numbing medicine right around the nerves at that area before they get down to the knee. Uh, doing an adductor canal block provides excellent pain relief uh, for really the first 12 to 24 hours after it's done uh, and it is a great help to our post-operative pain management. We like to do that before surgery. So that involves a little bit of a needle stick. It's usually not very painful. It's done under ultrasound control and most patients are very pleased that they have that done. They'll also prep your skin, they'll shave your leg, that sort of thing uh, to get you ready for surgery. Then you'll go back and have your surgery. Now, for the surgery, we generally use a general anesthetic. That means you go completely asleep. You either have an endotracheal tube, a tube down your throat, or sometimes just a device called an LMA, which is really more of an air sac uh, within the mouth. Either way, we're breathing for you with the ventilator, and we have con complete control of your physiology. Occasionally, surgeries are done under spinal or epidural anesthesia. That involves a needle uh, in the spine area to numb it up. But really, we prefer to do general anesthetic. We think we have better control uh, over your body's physiology. We think that's a little easier to wake up from and, and recover from after surgery. Once you're asleep, we will prep your leg so the entire leg that's having a knee replacement gets cleaned thoroughly with alcohol and then gets one of a variety of different preps that we use and then we drape and begin the surgery. Some physicians use, some surgeons use a tourniquet when they're doing a knee replacement. I generally do not use a tourniquet. A tourniquet is a large blood pressure cuff up around the upper part of the thigh uh, that is elevated, uh, meaning it's tight like a blood pressure cuff would be on your arm after squeezing the blood out and then elevating it. Now, that's good because it means very little bleeding during surgery, but it does put a lot of pressure on the upper thigh, sometimes can cause some bruising, and even even some, uh, some nerve bruising. So I've gotten away over the last couple of years from using a tourniquet and we've generally found that we do fine without that and the amount of bleeding that we have during surgery is not excessive. We can control it in other ways. So most patients don't get that tourniquet and that helps us with lessening post-op pain control as well. 
Now when it comes to doing the surgery itself, I've got a little model here to kind of show what we do. In this model, a knee replacement has already been done, but imagine that instead of metal and plastic, this was just the normal part of the bone. We make an incision that goes from about two finger breadths above the top of the kneecap down to about two, breadths, two finger breadths below the top of the kneecap. Now let me say that if you're bigger, you're going to get a bigger incision. So a six foot five guy is going to get a bigger incision than a five foot one woman. Or a five foot five guy that weighs 275 pounds is usually going to get a bigger incision than a five foot five person that weighs 200 pounds or 150 pounds. So uh, the size of your body often correlates with the size of the incision. We're going to make the smallest incision that we can to do the least amount of trauma to your tissues while we're doing the surgery and being able to do it successfully. Um, so that's generally the size of the incision. We turn the kneecap backwards and then on the underside or back side of the kneecap we make a flat saw cut saw cut and then on that kneecap we're going to put a little round plastic button called the patellar implant. Now on the shin bone and the thigh bone we have implants that really cover the bone. Sometimes people think that we are removing large chunks of bone when we're doing a knee replacement. Really what we're doing is putting a metal cap on the ends of the bone. So we have a rod that goes up the middle of the bone and then we make cuts that roughly correspond to the shape of the back of the implant. Really not roughly correspond, they perfectly correspond to the back of the implant. And when we make those cuts, we have eliminated any sort of bone spurs that you had from arthritis, any sort of asymmetric wear and tear that you may have had, and everything's nice and perfectly aligned, and then the implant ultimately gets cemented or glued in place. The same thing happens on the shin side of things. For most people going into a knee replacement surgery, their shin bone has become pretty crooked, and so we make a flat cut that's perpendicular to the overall length of the tibia, and then we have a metal cap that gets cemented into place with a plastic spacer and those can be of various thicknesses. So when we've completed that procedure we have saved the side ligaments, we call those the collateral ligaments that give you side to side stability. We want to keep those intact but we have sacrificed or gotten rid of the anterior cruciate, the ACL and sometimes the PCL and then the geometry of the implant replaces the function of those ligaments. For most people when we're done we now have a leg that lines up perfectly just like it's supposed to. We have a knee that will bend and straighten completely. Maybe it didn't do that before surgery. And we have a knee that's nice and stable from side to side and front to back. And the kneecap sits right in the little groove in the middle of the, knee, of the uh, thigh bone. So when we've accomplished that we've achieved all our technical goals for a knee replacement. Then we close everything up real good. Every layer gets closed securely so it's not going to come open when you start doing rehab with your knee. And in the final skin layer, we usually do either staple metal clips or we do an under the skin suture that doesn't have to be removed, followed by a big dressing. From there, you go to the recovery room and begin walking the same day.